Welcome back to Squid Game, but it's mean making. Only seven of the eight players have returned. Today we are taste testing their meads with their challenges and deciding who is the best mead maker here. May the best mead maker win. Welcome to Squid Game. I brought you all here to see who the best mead maker is. Let's get started. All right, guys. I I can't do that. I can't do it. It's too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, uh, welcome to Squid Game. Uh, this is the I literally the only time this has ever happened for me. And maybe unless someone else has done it underneath me. Um, so I'm, I'm super glad to have you here. Uh, obviously, you guys know the challenge, but for those who are unfamiliar with this challenge, we, um, I, presented you with an, a mead recipe. And then you all picked a number that correlated to a challenge. So, and I'll show it right now on screen. Here's what everyone's challenge was. Obviously, each challenge, um, was supposed to be a challenge in some regard. At the end of this, of this giant tasting we're gonna do, uh, someone's gonna win $100. So I'm excited to uh, to try these things and I'm thankful that you guys put in the hard work. So let me go ahead and open them up and then we will, I will get to taste it. Let's start with player number one. Player number one, tell us what you did here, what the challenge was like. Give us it all, all the details. Right. Um, well, I made a mead. <laughs> um, uh, it, it, it really wasn't all that uh, difficult from making anything I've done before, uh, although this is my first successful blueberry mead, so I was really excited about that. Um, I did um, about half my blueberries in primary and then the other half in secondary. And I think my biggest challenge was uh, trying to work around the flavors of the uh, of a yeast I've never used before, and I don't really know any of the properties for. Um, it tasted fine, but I had a lot of difficulty getting that cinnamon taste in. And then when it came to balancing uh, with the sweetness, trying to get the mouthfeel I was looking for with the... Um, appropriate flavor to complement everything i'll say you're the so, you, you're worried about the cinnamon but the cinnamon is super aromatic on this and it has a really really nice sweet but um smooth aroma like i don't know what kind what seasonal blueberries all those things but i'm not getting like a tart blueberry it's really smooth yeah I just it's got a got beautiful color was. too i mean it's the color on it's super nice it's exactly what I would think when I, I think of blueberry. It is, I mean, clear as can be. Yeah, I think you've you've achieved the cinnamon really well. Um, I almost feel like if you're putting ratios on the cinnamon to blueberry flavor, I'm getting so much like cinnamon flavor, but also um, mouthfeel because I do feel like mouth the cinnamon can give like a feeling as well as I've experienced more and more. I'm getting like. 60% cinnamon and like that 40% blueberry. Like it's actually, the scales are a little bit tipped um, to what you were saying. Much really I good. How it's dead to cinnamon. <laughs> no, it's just, I, I, I don't know that, um, I don't know that that's true at all. I think cinnamon, as I've experienced it more recently, and I've been um, trying to, to try different kinds of cinnamon. Thank you, Texas Longhouse Mead. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I've becoming more, I guess, uh, I'm searching out for it more as it is. So overall, um, I, and I'm going to put your recipe on, on screen, of course, because and, you know, everyone, I want everyone to see, including any, any adjuncts or things that you, you had. So, and I believe you just mentioned it. If you had to change one thing about this, now that you've been through it, what would you do different on your challenge to make it easier for you? Mm -hmm. Honestly, there's really not much I would change. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, as, as you said, you're, you're tasting a lot of cinnamon. I don't, uh, I've had a couple of friends say that they taste it as well. Um, so maybe, you know, uh, 
cut back on that cinnamon just a little bit to let the blueberry shine a little bit more. Um, but all in all, I'm very happy with with what I ended up with. It has, it's very well rounded, um, and the challenge a big challenge for all of us has been all of you i should say has been um the timing of it i mean three months yeah. to turn a meet around at at any point even a session meet while it's still you know three months is a long time four months is a long time to do it right and well it requires um it requires a lot all right player number two yeah <laughs> so mine was the uh no acid adjustment so it was tricky to figure out how I was going to make a blueberry and cinnamon and usually with blueberries you get a little bit of acidity with it and so trying to figure out within the constraints of the recipe which was three pounds of blueberries uh, how I was going to get the most acidity out of it so I, I ended up having to go to the store and I ended up buying a total of seven pounds of blueberry and sifted through all seven pounds to try to find some that were a little bit more tart than others, balance the tart and sweetness in the blueberries. Uh, you know, sometimes the bigger the blueberry, the sweeter, but the little smaller ones sometimes have a little bit more tartness to them. But sometimes it's the other way around. It's the bigger ones that will have the tartness. Uh, so I had to sit there to seven pounds, try some, and try to pick out. Ah, oh, that's like a, that's a fun guessing game. Yeah. It was uh, like I, I taste a couple from each little uh, box and see if that box itself was more tart or more sweet and it had a balance, you know, pound and a half. Cause I did a pound and a half in primary pound and a half post fermentation. Uh, and a pound and a half post fermentation was the tart, uh, the tartar blueberries to help bring the acidity tartness up. And then, uh, added the cinnamon post fermentation. Like I always do a, my favorite Ceylon cinnamon. And so I threw that in there. It was in there for a week, week and a half, almost two weeks maybe. And when I took it out, I racked it over, gave it a taste, or I let it sit for a little bit, then I racked it over and to get it off the rest of the cinnamon because uh, cinnamon can actually help things settle out. And mm -hmm. so uh, when I racked it over, I tasted it, and I was like, man, it's missing the cinnamon. Like, it's, it's very faint, or I'm not getting it as well. So I threw another cinnamon stick in there for five days, and I think it was just like the the shock of going from one, like racking it over, like the cinnamon kind of faded out from there. Uh, but when I added the second cinnamon and tried it again, the cinnamon definitely came through uh, quite a bit. And so it's now a cinnamon blueberry. I So the acid adjustment thing, I knew that was going to be a fun challenge when I designed it because obviously um, every single mead, needs some sort of acid adjustment. And sometimes it comes naturally via ingredients and sometimes you have to actually do something about it. And uh, I feel like you're sifting through your blueberries. You, you definitely were able to adjust and all that hard work you put into blueberry scavenger hunting um, worked because I, I get a nice full acid balance out of this. And the cinnamon is very aromatic. Um, it does feel and again, I don't have the full experience with the cinnamon. So like noticing the differences between them. Ceylon is, is sweeter, right? Yes. That's what, yeah, I get more. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I get, I don't know what kind um, rub duck Sue used. So I'm, I apologize. But uh, I get a lot of like a candle-like aromatics from it this, and sweetness. It's also very smooth. It's got a lot of um, tannin. In um, I, I like that you used half of your blueberries in the, the beginning. Um, I was saying that the, your cinnamon to your blueberry balance, I think your acid adjustment, like you were able to overcome that challenge itself. I do wish I had, uh, I don't know what kind of honey was used, but I wish I had almost a little, like I think you, like it almost has too much acid balance trying to make up for for the, the challenge itself um, and it worked but I want a little more like warmth from honey and not necessarily sweetness because I like the the sweetness level where it is so yeah that's my only my only beef with it yeah, that was my only issue with it too is I couldn't get the honey without 
the honey character without getting too much sweetness in there because I think that was at ten twenty five. I think it is. Uh huh. Player number three. Let's talk about Hello. yours. So, I had uh, no water as my challenge. And I've done all fruit juice meats before, but I've never done one where I fermented on all fruit, like a true no water mead. And I decided that that was the way I wanted to go this time. I think all juice would have technically been within the rules, but I, I wanted to try, you know, fermenting on the fruit and doing all that. So I took, initially it was nine pounds of blueberries and four and a half pounds of honey. I was hoping for a gallon and a half primary volume so that I would have a full gallon topped all the way up in secondary. Well, I got a lot less juice out of the blueberries than I planned. So I ended up having to bump it up to 12 pounds because had I left it at nine, the gravity would have been too high for it to take off. So that was my first like little snag. But after that primary went really smoothly. Uh, you know, you punch down the fruit cap once a week. I let it sit on the fruit for three weeks, and then I pressed it in my fruit, fruit press and sulfided because obviously you're introducing a lot of oxygen to a mead that's already been fermented. Um, and then I let it sit in secondary on a cinnamon stick and a half ounce of dark toast American oak cubes for a couple of months. Like, I think two months exactly, because we obviously didn't have a whole lot of time for this. In fact, that was that was one of the biggest struggles, because Oak Cube's typical extraction time is minimum two months. You're better off with three or four. Um, and also, I noticed at the end of that month that I wasn't really getting a whole lot of cinnamon flavor. So I added in some cinnamon extract that I had made um, for a different project and uh, extra cinnamon stick. And I also did some um, bench trials and adjustments, figured out how much honey I wanted to add. I ended up back swinging it, back swinging it to 1050 and uh, adding a little bit of malic acid. So even before, as I was pouring them, of course, I, I kind of know what's happening. I knew this one was the no water because of how it poured. Everything else was pretty like, I mean, you could tell it's liquidy. This one, it wasn't like syrupy, like, you know, it was chunky coming out, but you could tell like, it's got a little more, more heft to it. Um, and just, just the pouring. So on the nose, you, you get a ton of that oak. That oak is, is, you know, RKO and me kind of right in the face. Um, and I'm on the, I'm having a little hard time peeking past it as far as like aromatics are concerned. But you can tell there's a rich um, berry aroma under there. Um, yeah, so tasting it though, it's also obviously very um, oak heavy, I would say, but your cinnamon is like a feeling. And that's what I've noticed so far with these is sometimes cinnamon is like, it is it is a taste, you know, I taste cinnamon and sometimes it's a feeling and sometimes it's a combination. And right now it's a, it's a feeling. But I do like, obviously, the viscosity. The body on this was pretty easy to fill out when you're totally reliant on uh, no, no water. Like, it's pretty hard to make a light, uh, light-bodied mead. It doesn't feel like 1050, no, which it doesn't. is real dangerous. Like, it doesn't, like, if I were putting my guesstimate on the, the uh, final gravity of this, I would be like, this is like 1020, because you have the the balance between your high tannin and some acidity in there and then uh those two things are kind of are pushing down the sweetness level it's great i do i do want a little more i want a little more cinnamon taste i get it on the exhale but i want i wish i had a little more on the preliminary taste um and then i feel like your blueberry richness is is really nice um it's it's very clear that this is like essenced from all blueberries yeah that's good i wish um if i were to do this again without the parameters of a challenge it'd be older <laughs> and i'd use a different yeast yeah yeah i um you know in in, in hindsight i think uh, maybe 
there are a couple other yeasts that could have suited better for this uh, challenge, but I feel like it was it was fun to present this one. Yeah. Oh, right, thank you, player number three. Let's go to player number four. What we got, player number four? Uh, so uh, it's just a high gravity blueberry mead with cinnamon. Um, I started. I used nine pounds of blueberries, um, just a cold uh, maceration for a couple days. Um, and then from there, uh, I used a lot of the clover honey. Uh, I think it was about nine pounds as well. Um, final gravity ended up being around 1040 or so. It was a little higher. Um, and uh, the cinnamon, <laughs> I remember it was, it was during the, the winter time and I, I, I was doing a lot of traveling. So uh, I was kind of like, I was like, oh, I need to get this on cinnamon. I need to get this on cinnamon. And then so I, there was a point where I was like, I need to get it on now. And I threw like five cinnamon sticks in it for like a couple of days and then pulled it out real quick. I was like, I was like, wow. okay, that's enough cinnamon. <laughs> um, so, uh, so time, I just, I didn't do a lot of time management, but <laughs> I think also time would help this. It's also 15 and a quarter percent. Um, so it might be a little hot, but you know. It's it's pretty boozy, but it, I think it's nice and desserty as well. Your clarity is really nice. I'll go ahead and note that. I you know it's hard for you guys to see. I don't have the best camera up front, but clarity is really good. Um, the aroma is super interesting, and it's very one of the most fun things for me in this test is like seeing so many variations. Obviously, with challenges on a recipe, but so many different blueberry aromatics happening. This one is like a really sweet. Um, almost vanilla e like blueberry note, which I'm not I'm not used to that. And I don't get it. Uh, of course, I I very well could be becoming desensitized to cinnamon with the amount of cinnamon I'm having tonight. So uh, that that might be the biggest flaw of this of this whole thing right now is the amount of cinnamon my my body's like having to understand. But I need to get like a. There we go. The old old sleeve technique. Yeah. So you definitely do get the cinnamon. It's um, it is. I wish I knew the differences. I wish I could be like that's cassia and that's ceylon. Like I just that that's one of those life skills I want to learn. I think I did use ceylon. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Sweetness level. Uh, you said ten forty. Thirty. Yeah. Ten forty. You can tell it's sweet for sure. So I'm not, um, I'm hitting the face with a lot of like uh, a, a kind of very rounded malic acidy, tartaric acidy um, acidity. And then of course that sweetness, as far as depth and like sensing the cinnamon, it's definitely, it's, it's a lot of a feeling. Um, I get it on the back of my tongue, unlike some of these other ones. It's like, I think the five cinnamon sticks, obviously that amount of time, you know, you're like, you're throwing them in. You're just like, here you go. Good luck. Um, that I can, it's like a, um, a really a tannic feeling. I'm new tannin that I don't, have not re felt from cinnamon before. Which is not a bad thing. I think if I, uh, the only thing I want is... I do like the tannic value, and I do like that kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, like, uh, I almost said sparkling. I don't know what the, the feeling it is on your tongue. You can just tell. It's not numbing. I don't know what it is. Anyways, I do wish I had maybe, like, a smidge of uh, more roundness, and I don't know what that would entail, but I do like... I do like it, but I feel like the sweetness is just a little too, little too much for me right now. Yeah. But is what ABV is this? What'd you say? Fifteen two five. Ooh. All right. Hey, it's good. I mean, here's the thing: it, we got four people down already. All of them have been really good, and I um I get to be nitpicky and and cruel because I am the game master right now. So, and I will attempt to play the role. Player number five, 
This player, wait, player number five is not here, but we will, uh, we will taste his mead. I wish I had a description of his. In fact, I've already asked him to do so. So here is him talking about it. My challenge was that I could not back sweeten. I used 3.3 pounds of wildflower honey, one gallon of water, three pounds of Wyman's wild blueberries, half a pack of Lavin D47, one lemon squeezed and zested, one cup of Harney and Sons black tea with chocolate. Also put in two teaspoons of North Mountain Nutrient. Once I had all those together, mixed it, I had a gravity of about 1.090, to which I let it ferment until it got to about 1.010, to which I stabilized the mead and put it into two largemouth carboys and added one cinnamon stick to each one, each carboy. Um, I left the cinnamon stick in there and test tasted the mead every about two to three days to see how it was coming along and the cinnamon stick was in there for approximately maybe a week or a little over a week until taste and flavor of the cinnamon stick was imparted into the mead oh interesting oh his is like uh very reminiscent of rub duck sue's Aroma, like you guys have a very similar profile. That's that's super interesting. Um, very cinnamon heavy. Uh, blueberry is like I do. I get it's like a a mellow blueberry aroma, but it's still sweet. It's not tart. Hmm. Okay. This is. Uh, I think his was cannot be back sweetened. Yes. Okay, <laughs> he had a big challenge. His was cannot be back sweetened. Final gravity ten ten. I figured um, when this challenge, somebody would have to take. You'd have to start at extreme gravity in order to end at a sweetness level you'd want. But then you don't want to end too sweet. You also can't kick your yeast to like eleven eighty because then you're like, well, crap. So then you have to step feed, and there's a challenge there. A lot of cinnamon. Not a lot of sweetness, obviously. Can't back sweeten. The only thing I have, one of the problems I have with, with this right now is that it's not very full bodied. I get um, a little bit of like of uh, yeastiness still, which is a little odd to me. And then uh, I wish I had a little more roundness. I think given that you guys could add some extra things if it wasn't a non part of your challenge a little oak or something to add that tannic value would be helpful for his yeah okay player number six what's going on so yeah um my challenge was to uh oak the mead and i feel like that in some ways was maybe the easiest for a lot of people but for me i've never oaked on the homebrew scale before so adding oak chips Perfect. and stuff yeah it was actually a completely new thing it was something i wanted to do so this was a good excuse um what i ended up doing was i started by just making essentially a traditional dry mead um and i decided that i would wanted to add my blueberries in secondary because i wanted to make sure that i got as fresh and juicy Juicy of a character with those as possible. So I did the full fermentation with just the wildflower honey uh, and the yeast. Um, once I transferred that secondary, I added in the three pounds of blueberries and cinnamon stick, and I left those in for, I think, about two weeks. I was on vacation for part of it, so I wanted to test it a little bit more, but didn't get the chance, but pulled them out um, after that two-week period and immediately added my oak cubes. I went with uh, heavy toasted French oak cubes because I was reading that they could provide some nice cinnamon and kind of vanilla -y flavors to it. And I kind of wanted that aspect to it. Um, kept them on as long as possible for, yeah, as was mentioned earlier, the two months, which I would have definitely liked more, but um, I think I got as much as I could in that two months. 
And then back sweetened that because otherwise it felt way too dry. It didn't go too far. Ended at honestly only about 1.013 because I felt like there was enough of, and that was with some of the blueberry juice, of course, after uh, stabilization and everything too. So um, between the honey and the blueberry juice, it brought it up to 1.013, which I think smoothed it out in a lot of ways. And uh, yeah. The, uh, the nose on this, there's a, a warm spice note that is that vanillin like you're talking about. But it also has, I can't, I can't quite put up my, no, my nose and finger on it. It's, it's presenting like such an um, a, a interesting warmth. And I used that word before, but it's not, it's not the same kind of warmth that I had in, in a previous brew. It's interesting. There is, the, the blueberries have a, um, in between, for me, in between your, your sweet and your tart aromas, obviously there's extremes, as, as Carlos knows, there's extremes of blueberries in the universe, and you have some that are super sweet and some that are super tart, and this one is kind of right down the middle. You can tell, yeah, the tannic value from your, your oak is, um, it's interesting because it's not, Sometimes tannin is like overwhelming and it like it grips you and then it just pulls all the moisture out and you're just kind of left like going, what's going on? This is kind of still has still has a wash to it, which is kind of fun. It's not something I've experienced a lot with oak. There is a little bit of that. And maybe it's like a butteriness between your um, your blueberry and your oak kind of contrasting. As far as cinnamon, like. I feel like I get a, a, it on the nose. It is, it is, uh, it's a bright cinnamon. It's not like a sweet cinnamon, but it's good. It's, um, I do wish, one thing I do wish I had is like maybe a smidge more floral note from like that, that honey. So even like just like a a quarter pound, I don't know how big your batch was, but a, like a quarter pound or something a little more to bring back like a floral note to, I, I think, fight against the uh, almost uh, extra warmth that is there. Some brightness to bring be brought back in. But it is, it's good. I do like your, your blueberry note. And that, that oak is super interesting. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Now, we've only got one more. Player number seven. That's me. Um, what was your challenge? My challenge was to use six pounds of blueberries. Um, and I didn't want to do them all in primary. I wanted to, like, get as many types of the blueberry flavor as I could in there. So I did three pounds of blueberries in primary. And then I racked to secondary with uh, two and a half more pounds of blueberries, and I didn't stabilize at that time. So I allowed them to continue to ferment and do what they did sort of in a delicate fermentation, um, as delicate as it can be, you know. Um, and then the last half pound of blueberries, I added uh, post-fermentation and did um, stabilize uh, with, with a sous vide, um, so just with like maintaining heat on it. Um, and then I back sweetened to 1.020 with uh, a bit more of the wildflower honey. Um, I also added a little bit of acid blend, uh, at the end. And, um, I did a little bit of a bench trial as far as like how sweet I wanted to go with the mead. Um, also, I, I guess I should say that I, I added cinnamon twice. Like a lot of other people have said, the initial cinnamon that I added, which was just one stick for two weeks, uh, right when I hit secondary, um, that kind of got lost. The, the amount of blueberries and the continuing ad adding all the blueberries kind of just drowned that out. So I put another stick in for uh, another two weeks um, towards the end of the process. And you're going to have to tell me if that was too long because I, there's a decent amount of cinnamon on that. Um, so yeah, I did a little bench trial with sweetness. Um, I actually enjoy a really dry mead. So 1.020 for me was a, a fairly sweet finish. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's my process. Um, one weird thing that I had, and I kind of need help figuring this out, is that when I back sweetened with just honey, 
I had uh, a bit of like a striation effect in the jug where you could actually take a reading in the top half of it and it was bone dry. And you mm. took a reading in the bottom half of that same jug and it was 1.035. And so all the honey, which you could see it too, it was, it was crystal clear in the top half and it was just like a little crystallized honey haze on the bottom half. So right when I finished the meat, I actually racked into one container and then racked it again into bottles just to try and mix those in. And I was still worried about, you know, is this going to affect my clarity? Is this going to affect, um, you know, am I going to have uh, the same sweetness per bottle? But um, yeah, that back sweetening with just honey, this is the first time I've, I've really tried that. I guess I back sweetened with half a pound of blueberries too, but. As far as your, your um, back sweetening quandary, it sounds like to me, I wonder if like in that, that um, stirring up process that it just needed to be even more so, unless it re, re did that essentially, in which case, I don't know, that's real funky to me. That's something new. Yeah, I let it sit there for like three weeks, hoping that it would huh. just diffuse. It just kept on being two different things. I do think, um, so there's a lot of cinnamon character here, a lot on the nose, and then um, a lot on the taste too. Like I'm, I'm tasting it and I'm, um, I'm feeling it, <laughs> feeling the cinnamon. And uh, it has uh, that same like pleasant aroma. Like I, I get a nice uh, balance between, of course, your, your cinnamon. And then there is, uh, underneath that, there is like a... a a pretty nice little like warm blueberry fruitiness that pops through on the taste is like where I get a little overwhelmed by the cinnamon. This thing is a huge body and there, the tannic value is very, it's not, it's almost, um, what's weird. It's almost gritty. And I, mm. that sounds like a bad word and I don't mean it in that way. I just mean the tannin is like, it, it is still, it's it's clinging around like I am I'm constant I'm feeling it quite a bit. That sounds like a negative word, but it it is nice. It is pleasant. I wish I had a just like in some of these other ones a little more floral note coming through, and that's so hard to achieve because a lot of that boils down to your your yeast not blowing off the floral nice bright notes that you want like uh, while back sweetening can help with that the base problem is more so your yeast in that primary fermentation and i don't know the answer honestly i don't know that there is an answer but that's kind of something i want a little more of full body though it's a lot of cinnamon um and then a a nice medium tart medium sweet tart um blueberry that's good and number number eight is not here. I'm just going to tell you, he showed up for the first day of Squid Game Camp and then never came back. So, unfortunately, uh, we, we got to say goodbye to number eight. All right, so here's what I want to do. And I, I want to do this only for the sake of, like, I guess, dramatization or something. Like I am going to, I'd also think it'd be fun. I, I am going to, I'm going to taste test real fast and then rank them. And I'm going to go from, from the end to the beginning. And I, I personally, I have a huge moral dilemma. My, my, my heart is like not wanting to offend you. So please do not be offended. If I, if I put yours up lower or whatever, it's not, not to be offensive. They're all really good. Honestly, I, I have, um, I've not found one of these that I'm like, like, oh, I don't, I'm not ready to drink this again, which is always scary when you open up the doors to, to people you don't necessarily know in mead making. So I, I greatly appreciate that I, I want to taste these again. So I'm going to do that. All right, let's, let's do this. Here's the grand finale. <laughs> what you've waited four months of your life for. And again, I, <laughs> I hope you uh, sincerely hope you do not hate me at the end of this. Um, this is just 
just how I perceive these things. So I'm going to start from the bottom, of course. It'd be real anticlimactic to start from the, the top. Thing. <laughs> so in seventh place, because RIP member number eight, we will remember you, um, is player number six. Oh. Player number six, what was your challenge? Let's review that for the, the people at home. Uh, oaking the mead. Oaking the mead. Okay. Now, I, I will go ahead and explain some, too, so you don't feel totally hurt. My my biggest challenge here, or the biggest thing I was missing, is uh, some more roundness, sweetness from blueberry. I think that's what I was lacking, what I wanted more of, because it, it kind of turned to this tart blueberry side um, in the oak kind of flipped the coin a little too far, and that's the thing I was, I was wanting more of. It's still good essence, but... I just want a little more of that. Um, number six, excuse me, number per, uh, place number six. There we go. Player number five. His uh, for him. It's very um, tannic. It has a interesting. There's like a breadiness that is there that is distracting from like this the blueberry notes that he has. The cinnamon is like a it's like a light dusting of cinnamon, but it does have the essence there. It just has been. There are things deterring it, deterring me from noticing the two prominent things I want to see, or three, blueberry, honey, cinnamon. In fifth place is player number seven. Player number seven, That's what me. was your challenge? Um, that was six pounds of blueberries. Now, this one is tough. And this is where I, I kind of taste test it back and forth because it's it gets... I mean, all of them are really hard. I had to go back and forth. But this one, I think I moved around two times because the cinnamon is, is uh, the tannin from the cinnamon is t almost too clinging. It is, it is pulling away from the, the blueberry uh, flavor that I want from this. And I, I like the cinnamon, but it is almost too distracting. The body is nice. Um, the, everything about it is nice. It's just a little too cinnamon heavy. Number place, fourth place is player number four. <laughs> what was your challenge, player number four? Uh, it just had to be sweet over 1035. I think my the hardest thing with this one is that um, it, is, it is very sweet. Almost like it like which is nice like for supporting nice. blueberry but it does mean that you were having to counterbalance and i wish i had just a little more maybe like you oaked it and you know you kind of you talked about the oaking process i almost wish you'd like doubled your oak amount that way you could like fast track it in some ways i didn't oak it <laughs> just cut that out <laughs> wait sorry uh, i'm sorry there's, there's been a lot of, a lot of conversation <laughs> <laughs> I so didn't know. Did. I just threw a ton of cinnamon in for like a couple days. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, then on that note, I wish you had oaked it. I think that's the, the truth okay. of it. I wish I had a little balance. Maybe that's what I'm looking for, because there is the sweetness and the, the acidity, and then I just I like to say that oak kind of rounds the edges of it and just makes it kind of turn into this warm blanket, and that's kind of what I want. That would have fixed that. The sweetness is not bad. It just needs to be uh, needs to be brought underneath the wing of some oak or something like that. Uh, third place was player number two. Player number two, what was your challenge? No acid balance or no acid adjustments. So yours has, what I like like about yours is that the blueberry flavors you got um, are, are very true and, and nice and it. I think you did a good job of, com of uh, combating your challenge of acid balance with those blueberries. The cinnamon is sweet and clinging. Um, I just am missing, I feel like in that same light, I'm missing that last roundness of, of maybe some oak or something to just kind of bring it together. Kind of sandwich it and make it a complete package. Just a little more tannin. In second place is player number three. <laughs> player number three, what was your challenge? <laughs> no water. No water. This one is really, I mean, obviously viscosity, body, all of those things are easily achievable. 
The sweetness level is nice. I do. I just enjoy everything about it. There is a smidge of acid balance that I'm old, that I'm missing that I think would have taken it to the next level. It's still very good, and that's me being very nitpicky. So that means that the first place, the winner of the hundred dollars for the Squid Game 2022 challenges, player number one. Hey. Player number one. What was your challenge? Philly sour yeast. I'm very impressed. This this yeast is tough. I, this was probably when I was thinking about it one of the biggest challenges that I saw. Obviously, some other ones were big, but that yeast can be painful. You've done a great I, job. That was what I was about the most, and when it all finished, I was surprised at how it was. And thank you. I this is awesome. Well, maybe that's the secret to blueberry and cinnamon mead is Philly sour yeast. Maybe everyone just converts to that nowadays. <laughs> I'm, I'm using Philly sour again, that's for sure. Well, guys, uh, thank you so much for submitting to this. And again, this is the first time this has ever happened. And I, I honestly, I'd love to almost make it a reoccurring thing just because it's been fun and I think it stretches you. And anyone who's watching, make sure you go and challenge yourself. Don't just live in the normal world of mead making. Challenge yourself. Um, I'll be sending out 100 bucks to our first place winner, and there's a good chance that you might win 100 bucks in the future if we do this again. So join the man-made mead community and come be a part of our world. And thank you for watching. Thank you for participating, players. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers Bye. to you Woo! guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.